everyone! I'm here today to talk about a book that isn't quite as popular as some of the other books that I've talked about on this channel, but it was really good, like unexpectedly good. And so I wanted to talk about it because I had never heard of it before and it was just an enjoyable read. It's called Afraid of Everything. It is a bit obscure, but it was on one of Goodreads giveaways that they do, and I won that giveaway, and this was years ago, and so this has kind of just been sitting here not read, and I feel really bad. I'm sure the author and the publishing company wanted me to come out with some kind of review on this book um, when I got it, but that never happened, so I'm here to talk about it today. So there will be some spoilers in this video, just to warn you, if you'd like to pick up this book, I, I would highly recommend it. It wasn't a five star, but it was definitely, I'd say about a four star read. It's about a girl who has massive anxiety just around common things that you do every day. She recently got laid off, or not laid off, but at least like told to stay home for a while because of an incident at work where she had a bit of a breakdown. And it was kind of justified to me when they explain it, but you know, apparently you can't act like that at work. That makes sense. but. It was kind of justified. She has an event happen that kind of changes her thoughts on everything and her viewpoint. Now we're in the spoiler section because that's as much as you really want to know before going into this book. When I first started this book, it was a little anxiety inducing. I feel like it could be a trigger for some people. So if you do have really, really bad anxiety, I wouldn't read it because the way that she thinks and the way that it, the writing is done is kind of highlighting all of her anxiety and her bit of OCD-ness around, you know, just little things like keeping the house clean and going to new places. Like she goes to the mall to get something and that's like a huge stress point. Lots of stuff like that. She gets stalked by this van on her way home, which is the what incites the incident. And I think that was pretty anxiety inducing for me. I feel like I can handle myself in that department, but it was pretty stressful, but it didn't feel like it would be about anything really big or major. It felt like it was just going to kind of go over how she slowly starts to change her life because she does start to go to therapy at the very beginning. But then the big thing happens and everything becomes a lot, a lot more intense than I thought it was going to get. The car crash came out of nowhere. I just was not expecting that. I thought the police were going to get there and she would end up being fine and it would have ended up everybody would have assumed it was just her anxiety playing tricks on her about the stalker in the van. But then she crashes and she's in a coma in the hospital and she doesn't wake up. Like I thought this was going to happen and then a few pages later she'd wake up and we'd get to see everything that she does with her life after. But no, like the majority of the book takes place in the coma. I thought we'd see her travel, sell her house, do all these things that she suggested she wanted to do but she was too afraid to do. We don't get that but we get a lot more in terms of her mental capabilities and the huge life-changing revelations that she has while in this coma. So I was surprised that the majority of the book was in her head essentially, but I grew to really, really like it and really like everything that she was learning about herself and about how to get better that she couldn't have learned through just the therapist that she wouldn't listen to and family members that she wouldn't listen to and people that just didn't understand her deeply ended up being super deep and thought provoking so that was like really cool she learned to appreciate life as it was rather than stressing about what could happen she just learned how to sort of embrace the life she had and like actually be present in the moment it turns out she didn't have to do all of these life altering things to make a change she doesn't have to sell her house to make a change as far as her anxiety goes. She doesn't have to move across the country. She can just learn to live her life to the fullest now. The scene where Coriander, that's the name, that's how you pronounce the name, right? Coriander, her like mirror self who turns out to be some angel or some being that was meant to be there to speak with her in that moment. When she explains the hum that the scientists hear in the universe and how God and science can both be true. It doesn't have to be one or the other. And they're more one and the same than we think. That was so cool. Just the way she was explaining all of that was really interesting to me because I know there's obviously always going to be debate over God versus science, but she kind of explained scientific facts and then looped it around back to how 
God can still be the cause of everything. That was just so neat and so thought provoking. All of the scenes when she would talk about all that, because she opens it up very slowly. She doesn't just tell her everything all at once, because I guess that would shock her too much. So over the course of all of these conversations that they're having, you're learning more and more about the universe while you're learning about the main character. I loved Coriander and her spunkiness. I feel like her backstory was really incredible and really sad, but she had the kind of personality where you could tell that she was just gonna tell you like it is. And I just love that. I didn't even like the main character of this book that much until closer to the end. Maybe part of that was because she reminded me a little of myself as far as getting you know, nervous about silly things. But also part of it was just that she was kind of, kind of judgmental. Like she would say things to Coriander or think things about her before she even really got to hear anything from her. She was very self-focused because of her conditions. So she, you know, couldn't be there for her mom, which really sucked. And even now can't really be there for her dad or her daughter just because she's it's just too hard for her. And that's understandable, but at the same time, it's very, it's, it sucks for them. I didn't really like her personality until closer to the end. And maybe that's how it was supposed to be. Maybe that's how the author's doing that on purpose. It was an amazing turnaround there at the end. The end scene is beautiful with the barbecue at her place and everything. This book really caught me off guard. The first probably 80 to 100 pages, I, it came out exactly what I thought it was going to be like. It wasn't going to be that interesting. And then when it kicked in, it really, it really kicked in and I really liked it. And I would recommend picking it up. This isn't like a popular book. It's not really a buzz topic right now. And it's actually kind of old now because I won it a few years ago, but I would recommend it. I definitely would like to hear your thoughts about it. I'd like to hear from anybody that's read this. If you have, I'm guessing not because I don't know anybody that's read it. Those are my thoughts. Really good read. Like I said, I will continue posting book reviews on here, but probably not every book that I read, just the ones that I have a particular interest in or that are really popular in that moment. If I have an unpopular opinion, I'll probably post that too. I'm sure everybody wants to hear it. Anyways, I had fun. I make videos every Thursday, sometimes other days too. Hope you guys have a fantastic week and I will see you next time. Bye.